Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to continue styling our River Arts Cafe small business website. Okay, so where we left off, this is, by the way, you're looking at the finished version, kind of we're using it as a guide. Um, we've already styled the header. We've got this main paragraph styled now with a photo. So next is to tackle the items in the lower portion of the page, particularly these three featured products, these three promo items. We want to get those side by side and nicely centered with a similar background color as that main paragraph. So they were right there. So let's work on it. Now in the code, especially on the HTML, these items are my promo items and each promo item is in its own little aside which includes a headline two and a, and a paragraph. So we need to get these asides side by side. Now by the way, that's not what aside means. Aside is really often used as extra information in an article or a key section or something like that. So you might argue, eh, maybe I shouldn't have used a side. Maybe I should have used a div or something like that. But I'm going to stick with this. I think an aside is a pretty good container for these particular elements because they are supporting elements for the main page. Um, they're an aside, let's say, to why you're there. So. I'll go ahead and rationalize it that way. But let's get these things styled appropriately. So I'm going to head back over to my CSS. And let's see, just as a reminder, I've got class promo items. So the promo items aside, the aside that are in my promo items, I'm going to go ahead and set their width to 33.33%. .33 so since there's three of them, I want them to each be to be the same width, stretching all the way across. And I will go ahead and float these to the left. Now, this is just like our list items. If you take your list items and float them to the left, they will appear side by side. If you take three sides and float them to the left, they'll appear side by side. So float left is a really handy tool when you want things that normally appear one on top of the other to float side by side. So just that little change there, go ahead and save this head back over to my browser and refresh and sure enough there they are all three of them are side by side now how do we get them near the bottom of this actually let's do the background color first so it's a lot easier for us to see so I'm gonna go ahead and create a rule scroll this up so you can see it for my promo items and I do want to put a background color and I'm gonna use the same background color that I used for my paragraph up there and because my promo items contains all those floating elements, we have a couple choices here. We could do our good old overflow hidden trick again. And when I save this, we can now refresh and we can clearly see where those promo items are. And in this example, maybe you don't like the overflow hidden or just to see something else, we could do something like min height. And we could do, and we might have to do a little trial and error. We could start off with something like 90 pixels. And I can see, oh, that's not nearly enough. So then we might try, let's say, 200 pixels until we get something that we think is appropriate. Um, now, if we didn't, if we couldn't rely on this text, though, we don't know if it's going to be short text or long text. Overflow hidden is really probably the better way to go. So we'll head back to that. And now that we can see this particular section of our promo items, how do we get them down towards the bottom of the main content? And you have a couple of choices. Um, now the advanced, the Web Dev two students, they're they're pretty um, experienced at using position absolutes within relatively positioned containers. So they may go the position route where they do a position relative on the main content, and then they could do a position absolute on the promo items. The Web Dev one students really haven't seen that so much, so they might just go and try um, the more familiar margin top, and then we can just experiment a little bit here. So if I do a big margin top on my promo items, that starts to push things down. And you can kind of tell just by seeing through the background color, it might be a little bit tough for you. I kind of went pretty far. How does it look on this one? Yeah, we kind of, we're near the top of the leg of that piano. So I can move this up a little bit higher. So maybe something like 340. Let's see how that looks. Oh, we can go a little higher. Refresh, there we go. And still probably just a shade bit higher, but I think we're in pretty good shape. We can barely see that background image down there. I'll move it up just a little bit more though. Okay, 
So that kind of takes care of that. Now for some of the other characteristics of this promo items area, notice we've got some padding and some font size changes. So I'll go ahead and take all of my promo items, uh, my the main container, and I'll put the good old padding 10 picks on there. And then I'm also going to say stuff like promo items H2. That's a descendant selector. The H2s and the promo items. I'm going to change their font size to uh, 20. There we go, noticeably smaller. And I think I will take those headline twos, text align center, takes care of that. And now we're in pretty similar shape to how these look, little margin bottom on those headline twos. There we go, so now we got a little margin bottom on the headline twos and we're in pretty similar shape to what we had in the mock-up. Notice I've got a little bit more paragraph text on my current page. It ends with Magna Aliqua. So we've got a little bit more text on here, so that's why it appears a bit taller. But that's not too bad. So that takes care of the promo items area of the web page. Um, last but certainly not least for this main desktop style is going to be just styling our footer. And then we can move on to other things like the mobile-friendly version and the print-friendly version.